Hey there, friends. Hey, guys. This is Jay and Francis from Finding Crazy. We're a family of nine. We're traveling full time in our RV with five of our kids and we're going around the country to see every new so far. And today, we're going to talk about not seeing them so far. That's right, today we're going to talk about being disappointed, not seeing the National Park. So we are down in South Florida, staying just south of Miami, so that we are centrally located to see lots of amazing things, including three national parks, a national preserve, and Key West, Florida. So lots of stuff. But today we were going over uh, to Biscayne National Park, which if you're not familiar with that park, it's like 99% water. It's basically like a little thin strip of the coast and then a little thin strip of Island Keys that uh, make a circle around the water. Uh, and so really, there's nothing to do except for the water. Uh, and so we had a pretty epic adventure on tap for today. We were gonna go canoeing through the mangrove forest, a guided canoeing trip through the mangrove forest. So we were really, really excited. Yes. In fact, it's probably one of the things we're most excited about this entire week. And so we all got up this morning, we got geared up, we got sunscreened up, we got all of our equipment, we got our lunches, we got everything, which with this many people is a, it's a big deal. Sunscreen. It's a lot. Um, and drove all the way to the park and we were literally standing at the sign taking our picture, filming an intro to what this video was supposed to be. Um, and I got a call from the institute that leads the things and this little girl came on and said hey i'm your guy today i don't think we can go out today the winds are really bad um, and because of the number of kids we have normally they do it on kayaks but because of the number of kids we have to the number of adults just two adults and five kids we were going to have to do canoes and canoes sit higher in the water until the wind tosses them around even more and that's not the way we want to do yeah. Biscayne, and that's not the way we want to, uh, we want to enjoy it, we want it to relax, we want it just to be scenic, and uh, she said we're going to be fighting, uh, not going out, but coming back in was going to be really, really, really hard, and that's not the way we want to do that, for sure. And unfortunately, the uh, only other really thing to do at that part of Biscayne is a trail that runs down along part of the bay and it's close for renovation right now, which we didn't know either. We really wanted to go um, on that. And so literally I went into the visitor center and I'm like, so we're blown off of, literally blown off of our canoe trip, the trail's closed. Is there anything else for us to do today? I'm like, well, you can wait till this afternoon and there's a boat tour out to one of the keys, but we didn't want to wait around that long. Um, and so, yeah, so we were, but I will tell you what was really cool is while we're sitting there waiting for Che, um, the little canoe guy, guide lady comes out and she said, here comes a manatee. So how fun was that? We got to see this beautiful manatee come in literally within arm's reach of us to come right under the dock just to kind of do a wonderful swim around in the marina and then went back out. And so it was just a special treat to get to see that for us to enjoy um, that little bit of nature. So it got our appetite wet. And one of the other things that we really wanted to do here was to go to John Pennekamp State Park. And so that is gonna be what we're gonna to do today. So sometimes, especially when you're dealing with Florida weather, especially when you're doing outdoor things, um, which all the national parks are, you're gonna find that you run into bad weather. You're gonna run into rainy days, which the latter part of our week is gonna be rain. Um, you're just gonna to have to deal with the elements and you're gonna to have to learn to be flexible to change your plans and to find something else to do, to keep a positive attitude, to celebrate the little things, which that manatee was definitely a little big thing to us, and then to be able to find a different plan. Thankfully, we're within 40 minutes of a great state park that is kind of 
nationally known as John Pennekamp. And so we called, they said they weren't full at all. So we're gonna take this opportunity to go down there, hopefully getting a little snorkeling in, which our kids are so excited and about. And we bought some snorkel gear specifically for this trip, because in a lot of the places yeah. we're gonna be, that's kind of one of the main things. Of um, course, you're in here, South Florida. Um, and it's gained the little bay that you normally can do it in game was closed off because that was part of the construction and so there was only one little area and it was right in the wind and so the water was stirred up and not clear. But like she so said, it's the Florida. Kids were like dying to yeah. get some of their snorkel gear on. So. Well, and Jump Into Camp is just about 40 minutes away from Biscayne, so really quick, easy drive. We've already had the lunches. We already have all our stuff geared up, ready to go. So we're going to go down in there. It's about $8 to get into the state park, plus a little bit per person after that. So for a very affordable amount, this is a great way to make a change of plans. Key Largo has a little bit better weather. So we're going to scoot down, enjoy some of the keys, um, and see what we can get into today. Sometimes even though you're disappointed and don't think things are going to work out, they actually just completely work out. <laughs> so we got to John Penny Camp thinking we were going to do some snorkeling uh, and got here and realized that they have paddles through the mangroves and they have three person kayaks and theirs is actually not kind of out in the open like Biscayne is, but is actually back through the mangrove trails, I guess I'll call them. Uh, and so the wind's not really bad. And so we are all out here on three kayaks, Yay! enjoying some amazing paddling uh, back in John Penny Camp. So let's check out this on, beautiful area. Us. We don't need a motor. We don't need a sail, and we don't need no fins or gills, and we don't need a tail. Let's just keep it simple, we'll each get an oar. Paddle out to no man's lake and float till we can't no more. Can you canoe on a little boat built for two? Captain and your crew Can you canoe If there's nothing better to do I wanna float down the river with you We don't need no outlets We don't need no wires Primetime entertainment will be Lightning bugs and fires Let's just keep it simple Unplugged and outside Sound waves on the water Don't need to be amplified Can you canoe on a little boat Built for two Can you canoe I'll be a captain and your crew This has been absolutely epic. I mean, when you think you're disappointed and frustrated and that things aren't working out, God sometimes has the coolest things up his sleeve. So literally, we are all together by ourselves. We are weaving through these tiny little trails, water trails through the mangroves. We have seen crabs in the trees. The water is so clear we can see the fish. It is absolutely beautiful back here. And everybody is having a great time because we're getting to do it together. So that's been the best part. So here's a little bit of a picture that Christopher's got his own right there and then we have all of us are in this boat and we are just weaving through these little canal waterways and John Pennekamp will give you a map that is laminated and you get to just weave yourself uh, any place that you want to go. Jay's got that right here. And so we are just navigating ourselves though it would have been great to have a naturalist with us like at Biscayne. I am so thankful for this day. It's gorgeous. The wind is not hardly blowing at all. It has been magnificent. So keep coming with us because who knows what we're going to see around the next bend. Mm -hmm. 
So now that we're done with paddle boating, we were out on the water um, two hours. Actually, we cut it about 15 minutes short because the kids are dying to go snorkeling. Uh, we bought some snorkel gear just for this trip, and so they are dying to check it out. So we're going to go eat some late lunch, early dinner, some dinner, whatever. <laughs> we're going to go eat, and then we're going to go get in the water. So this has been a pretty epic day here at Dog sure. County Camp. I mean, again, we started off with what we thought was a total disaster, and it's turned into just an amazing, amazing day. Honestly, we should just come here first. Oh, um, so great. You so, cannot miss this. 
state park. You cannot. Yeah. So John Penny Camp, um, it cost us. It cost us eleven fifty to get in with seven people. It goes down like fifty cents per person. I think the minimum is like eight bucks or something. So you know you're looking at around ten bucks uh, to get in. Uh, and then the kayak rentals are super cheap here. I want to say the double was like thirty dollars for two mm-hmm. hours, and the single is like twenty dollars for two hours. And if you've got small kids, you can get three, as you saw with us, in the doubles. They'll even put which an extra seat in for you, which was perfect. For us. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to do it. You yeah. know, we could we couldn't divide our people up enough. Right. I will say they have a four hour option. I'm not sure my arms could have taken right. four hours. I guess if you had four hours, you could just stop and rest more yeah. Yeah, you can. and we had a pretty windy day coming back and so like it, our last you know half mile to get back to the dock was like five times harder than anything <laughs> else but if it was a calm oh. day then i guess it wouldn't matter and christopher is 12 years old now he is as tall as i am but he was absolutely capable of oh, doing yeah. it i will say we went down an incredible little trail called sandy creek yeah. and you're going to look at it and think whoa that's pretty tight and it is just right at the entrance it is a little bit of maneuvering but you're mm-hmm. not going to want to miss it yeah. um it is like your own private oasis we hardly saw anybody on the trail. We just were covered. There was just a canopy of mangroves. Saw all kinds of wonderful um, wildlife and all that. So don't miss that Sandy Creek Trail. Sandy Creek. So it's um, actually, you'll see it in the bottom right of the map when they give you the laminated map. Um, it is actually a big loop. Mm. Um, we only did about the first third and then just turned around and came back because we were running out of time and we didn't have time to do the whole Because the park closes loop. at sunset. Yeah. So for us now, we're here in November. Yeah. So sunsets at like 5.30. So we had to so have our we, equipment back yeah. in. Like our two hours ended with when all the equipment had to be back. And we so, wanted to snorkel. Our kids right. were dying to snorkel. Um, and so um, if you do snorkel, and we suggest you do, right here at the little beach um, at the visitor center. Cannon Beach. Cannon Beach. Um, there's two little cannons on the shore. But what's really cool is out at the very edge of where the buoys are, there's a big buoy floating. Right below that, they've sunk like probably a dozen other cannons, and there's like a plaque for a mock shipwreck. And it's so shallow. It's probably only like six feet deep right there. But you get out there, and there's just fish all around the cannons. Like, our kids thought it was the coolest thing ever, and these two adults thought it was pretty cool And it's well. just literally right out there. Like, it's it's not far. Um, I would say that, um, I, personally, I would we brought our life vest um because it just makes snorkeling easier for the kids kids. um and it is you know it's about uh, they said it's like 100 feet out there um but you know it today was a little choppy and so it just helped the kids it helped me and jay to feel much more confident that they could sit and kind of buoy a little bit and kind of bob around and then keep going um and so i would say if you have young children please bring a life vest because i think you're going to be a lot more comfortable taking them out there so that they can see this absolutely epic little cannon beach area there's not a ton even the lady said if you don't do anything on the water there's not a whole lot left to do um right. there's a couple of little trails back up in here but truly yeah. um the you, you show the is trails, the water yeah. you for do the sure. trails on the water for sure there's paddle boards you can rent mm-hmm. there are kayaks like you've seen us and um and then there are also like snorkeling tours right. and boat they tours that they take and, out like so, all those things we didn't even get into yeah. but they have them all here so this and, is this could be a multi-day stop. Yeah, and if you don't have um, your snorkel and your mask and things like that, so there are those. You can there. rent them here. Yep, um, we did no, not. No, you can you can buy them. Right, you, so you can COVID. rent them here, but we um, didn't because um, it closed before we wanted to leave. So we bought, but they were only like ten dollars for um, the semi dry one. Mm-hmm. So really good deal. It was really great. They also have some um, half wetsuits that if it's cold, you don't want to get in the water with just your swimsuits on. They do have that as well. So it's really kind of an all-inclusive place that is wonderful, kind of has everything that you need. There's a little cafe. There's like a little food truck area. Um, the visitor center has an aquarium. Um, so it really is a great little spot. It is super inexpensive, but big on the excitement. And so I would say a day at John Penna Camp. For it's us, we drove from, we we're staying at Miami Everglades um, with Thousand Trails. And for us, it was about a 50 minute drive yeah, here. A little under an hour. It was so easy. And you get to visit the Keys. So if you don't want to go all the way down to Key West, or if you're just wanting to get a little taste of the Keys, this is super simple. It's easy to get there and it's super affordable. 